Welcome to another episode of Sincerely V. I am Vanessa Jen and before we get into today's episode, I have to thank my loyal sponsors for making season two possible. Prince Hex, Noella Hair, So Aesthetics, Bello Edu, and of course, Maestro Restaurant located right here in airport. I know you're wondering who my guest is today. Well, she is a women's activist, she is a veteran newscaster, and she continues to inspire women, not just in Ghana, not just in Africa, but across the globe. Her name, Gifty Auntie. I know you all see that she's glowing. There's so much for us to discuss. We're gonna get into what is occurring now in her life, but before that, we have to take it back. So welcome, Gifty Auntie, to Sincerely V. Thank you, V. And thank you, so, like it's been weeks and weeks and we're I like, know. we have to get I know. Auntie. So again, thank you so much. Ooh, well, okay. thank you. So, and you are getting me, I mean, getting exclusive. I know, which is I'm the, <laughs> You're the first to interview me. I'm so excited, so thank, I'm honored. I'm also honored to be on your show. Thank you. So let's start off with who is Gifty Auntie? Well, Gifty Auntie is the last born of eight children to the late uh, Mr. S.C.J. Auntie and uh, the late Madam Stella Abba Aiden. Um, growing up, I was referred to as the accidental baby. Okay. <laughs> well, they used to tease me that I was implant, you oh. know, because the age difference between all my other siblings were two years. Okay. But uh, the difference between the one who comes before me and me at four years. Okay. So, I mean, she was supposed to be the, the last, last born, and yeah. somehow this stubborn one had to come. Right. So she came. <laughs> you know, um, I went to, so I lived in Tema all my life. Okay. I grew up in Tema. I went to primary school in Tema. I went to middle school in Tema. Okay. Then went to Infant Mind Girls Secondary School, went to GIJ, worked at GBC for a while, yes. moved on to do my master's. Yes. And then now I've become this agenda activist and advocate and a feminist right there's yeah. so much so much so much that you've done in your career yeah. but yeah. starting off in the industry I know it wasn't easy for women no so how did you start how did it all happen how did you become this powerhouse woman well I don't know about that if I'm a powerhouse oh, yes, woman are. now but well Getting into journalism was accident. Okay. I would say that journalism found me. I didn't find journalism because of all the dreams that I had as a child, I never thought about becoming a journalist. Even really? when I was GI, at, at GIJ, mm -hmm. not studying journalism, I didn't have any plans of becoming a journalist. Okay. I wanted to be a public relations officer because at that time, they were the ones making the money. Okay, so it was so about I just wanted to make some money, right. take care of my father, take care of myself, make an impact. Whatever it was going to take, I didn't know, okay. but those were the principles that my dad taught me. Right. So I was going to go by it. So I didn't get a public relations. You know, those days, um, GIJ was offering two major courses: public relations and marketing, and then journalism. Okay, so. They said, we think, I passed the exams, I went for first interview, said, oh, we think you'll be good for journalism. I'm like, please, <laughs> if you say I'm good, you look at what I came to apply for. I want to be a public relations officer. Right. They said, okay. So th th you go through two major interviews. You write the first exams, go for the first interview. When you qualify, you go for the final interview. Okay. So I qualified for the final interview. I went there in a different panel. They also said, well, we think you'll be good for journalism. I said, no, please. I want to be a public you, relations officer. You were sticking officer. firm with what you wanted to do. You wanted to make the money. They said, okay. Letter of admission came, and they had given me journalism. Oh, my gosh. I just cried and cried and cried, and my brother told me, listen, don't worry. You can still do journalism and become public relations officer. Right. So that's why I went to GIJ to do the journalism. But mm -hmm. even those days, we used to do practical attachments, six months. Okay. For the six months, I applied to Internal Revenue Authority, their public relations department. Uh -huh. And I had every intention to stay there for the, all, the whole six months, public right. relations, because I wanted to be a public relations officer. But just after one month, the head of public relations department at that time 
said, Gifty, why don't you go and try a media house? It's oh, like, wow. why are people Everyone doing this to me, you. pushing me into it? He said, listen, I'm making a deal with you. Mm -hmm. Go to a media house. If you don't like it, come back. I promise you, I will employ you. Right. I went and never came back. So everyone saw the, your talent. Exactly. Everyone saw what you had but yourself in a sense. I, I, you know, I mean, it's maybe because I was a, a talkative. Right. And I love to read and write. So I thought, I think they saw something, but I, my mind wasn't there. Okay, so that moment you stepped into a media house. Right. What was your thought? Were, were you questioning yourself like, am I making the right decision? What uh, am I doing? Vanessa, I was just confused and just, what am I doing here? Right. You know, what am I doing here? But one thing my father thought to me too was that, listen, no matter where you find yourself, you apply yourself, you give off your best. Yes. Whether you love doing it or not, give off your best. And you never know who will identify you and take you to where you want to be. Right. So I went to GNA first. Uh-huh. And um, I found some, now the, the special assistant to President Kofor, Frank Ajikum, mm -hmm. um, Divine, I've forgotten Divine's say name. And then there was another gentleman. They, they took me Under in because I was this troublesome pest <laughs> always around them. So they were going with me to parliament. Whenever they are going to parliament, I'll wow. follow them. They were the parliamentary correspondents, so I'll just follow them right. to parliament to go there. And I'll just be pointing out, ah, this man said, okay, go and follow it. Then they look at me and say, you said you didn't want to be a journalist. What? But you, you were know? right in the element. I was right in there. And then from there, I went to Ghanaian Times. Ghanaian Times, I met um, Liz Hefa Nasari. You know, uh, she's a media consultant now who also took me in and was like a mother hen. Right. Will push me here. She would just send me. I'll go and look for. And then um, Auntie Ajua, uh, I... Um, she, they will send you out to go look for a story. Mm -hmm. If you don't find a story, don't come back. The and pressure. The pressure. I'll, just, I'll, I'll just go out and I'll cry and cry, but I'll always come back with a story. Of course. Then one day, I did a story on a young um, street girl mm -hmm. who was selling iced water on the street. Mm -hmm. Those days, it was those uh, plain rubber, it's not the sachet oh, or pure yes. water that they call it. Yeah, those ones, right. you know, and I did a feature on the girl and the, the story made a front page headline story with my name there, Gifty Auntie. I was like, hmm, this is nice, <laughs> especially because my father was so excited. Right. He moved from door to door, the whole of Tema Comte 8, showed the newspaper oh. to everybody that, you see, that's my daughter. Right. <laughs> you know, so he was really excited. I was like, okay, my dad is proud about, uh, yeah. uh, of me. He's proud about what I've done so far. So let me put more energy into it. Yeah. So I got more involved. Okay. I went to um, GBC. I became, you know, a reporter, yeah. always ready to do anything or sacrifice, weren't being paid, but I was always at work on time, right. get good stories, wherever it is, wherever you send me, whether to do a rubbish. I remember my first ever stand-up was by, by a huge rubbish, <laughs> you know, dump. Uh -huh. You know, this heap of rubbish, and the uh, residents were complaining about the stench oh, that was coming. Right. And then one Mr. Muzu, Mr. Muzu made me stand by this stinking heap of rubbish right. to do a stand-up wow. like a piece to camera and i had to sign up for gtv news gifty auntie reporting and i wanted Wonder. to quickly touch on you said you weren't being paid no we weren't being paid yeah people i i think it's because you became passionate about what you were doing yeah. so at that moment the money that you knew that the money will come one day, day. but I'm yes. passionate enough to not be paid. Exactly. Right. That's what a lot of us lack these days. Right. Be passionate. The, the sense of volunteerism. Yes. The, the patience to learn. Right. To really learn. And those days, it didn't matter whether you were an intern or being paid or not. Right. You were made to do the job. Yeah. I wish we still could instill that in the minds of... The young ones these days, because I feel like they don't understand it. They don't understand it. And, and, and it's actually sad because they don't put the effort because they feel like I'm not being paid. So, paid. But you claim that you're passionate about it. Yeah. Those days were the days that actually formed me, that actually firmed me up and toughened me. Right. You know, because 
I can boast about this to the glory of God that I'm one journalist who has traveled the length and breadth of this country. I've been to places that people who come from those regions haven't even been to. Wow. I have scars on my legs because I went to places up in the Upper West region, Upper East, Northern region, naively not knowing that I have to cover my legs. Right. Vanessa, those days, I remember we leave the hostel. We're uh -huh. then sleeping at the Navrongo Health Center. Okay. Health Research Center or something like that. That's where we're based. Mm -hmm. We leave the hostel around 5 a.m. without breakfast. Without breakfast. Without breakfast. We'll come back and our breakfast, lunch, dinner is waiting for us. Wow. Yes. Yes. We'll go in there and you, you, you have no excuse and yeah. there was so much joy in it because you felt that you were helping people yes. you were telling these stories and you could see that there were places that they hadn't even seen anybody from Accra right right I remember one village we went to we went to do a story on female genital mutilation okay. there was this was I think 90 98-99 we met this old man using some very uh, rusted instrument that he uses for, and you could see stains of blood from on the previous, them, like, previous right. yeah, they're being used and all that. Now we did a story, he spoke to us, and this looking slim, old, and God forgive me, very dirty looking man, mm -hmm. but he spoke English like the British man. You never underestimate some of the people you meet in the most remotest parts of this country. Right. Right. And after doing everything, when we're coming, the elders were seated at the entrance. Why? They said, I have contaminated their village. So either I get circumcised or I produce a sheep. Mm -hmm. What? Actually, a cow, not a sheep. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they were not going to let me leave. Okay, wait. We're going to hold off mm -hmm. and we're going to continue with this story when we get back. Right. You're tuned into Sincerely V, Real Women, Real Voices. Let's get into Sincerely Printex. Happy birthday! Really? Thank you, guys. You know it's all about Printex for any and every occasion, especially when it's my birthday. But guess what? For my viewers, if you want to recreate this amazing look by Jibby Couture, do so. But make sure to hashtag Sincerely V at me on Twitter at Vanessa underscore Jan. To print text? To print text! <laughs> Welcome back to Sincerely V, Real Women, Real Voices. I'm having an incredible conversation with Gifty Anti, and she's going into detail of her life as a journalist, and it has not been easy. We left off with, I'm still like, I have goosebumps, <laughs> right. but we're going to continue with what you yeah. were saying so yeah. that our viewers can get... Yeah, so I mean, the long and short of that story was that in the long run, thankfully we went with... Uh, an official, a lady, um, mm -hmm. and I wish I could meet her one day, a lady from the Navarongo Health Research Center okay. who uh, vouched for me that they will bring the, the cow to them to, for, for oh. them to cleanse the, the, the village before they allowed us to go. Wow. So, yes, yeah, before they allowed us to leave the village. I mean, I got back in. I got sick. Wow. When I went back to the hostel yeah. where I was in, I got sick because it was scary. Of course. And you could see it on the faces of the people like, okay, you, 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 you have no choice. It's either we circumcise you or you pay the cow. You put your life on the line, line for your job. Exactly. And that's when you know it's... Exactly. You like, you're in love, love with, what, with you do. what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. You put yourself, you apply yourself. It's tough. Right. Life is tough. Nobody said it's going to be easy. 
it's still it's tough right but it's very rewarding yes when you sit back and you see not the awards you win not the applause you get right. but you see that people's lives are being transformed yes. you see that people are being touched people right. are having a renewal of the mind that is where my reward i say that's my greatest award right. Sometimes I call my friends and tell them, hey, I want another award. I said, which one, which one? I said, I met a lady who said, oh, you were crazy. <laughs> but it's you true, know, it's but rewarding for you. Exactly. Right. Okay, so now from newscaster to TV presenter, right? how was that transition and okay. why? Yeah, I actually started as a TV presenter. I okay. started with the morning show. Right. That's the breakfast show, the first ever um, yes, morning was... show on TV. Yes. It was started in partnership with Mr. Edward Boating. Oh! Oh, yeah. So I would say he's always my boss. I mean, right. my first ever boss, you know, with GTV. So it was started on the, on the, on the 13th of February, 1997. Wow. That, um, that alone shows how long you've yeah. been in this industry. Exactly. Exactly. And I was supposed to be a floor manager. Right. I wasn't supposed to be on. And I always tell people that this is something you, ne you need to learn from. We were all supposed to gather by 5 30 uh -huh. by 5 a.m right the show was starting at 6 a.m uh -huh. my father woke me up i left in Tema then so i woke up very early right. i got there around before five and um, the driver was going for the newspapers so i went with the driver um, right. pick up the to pick up the newspapers from seiko okay whilst we're coming i was going through the papers somewhere when we go we got to uh work mm -hmm. madame beatrice Edu, who was supposed to be the main presenter uh -huh. got in a bit late so she was under pressure okay. because you know it was the first ever so sometimes right. if you're not careful you oversleep right. or traffic and all that so she was under pressure to do everything so i went to her i just said oh auntie b i've read this um i read through the newspapers and i've gone through the papers and the story i think you can decide so she was like gifty just apply makeup go and sit there you read the stories and then i'll discuss it oh wow that is how my break on tv started wow that is how my break on TV started. Like you never know As when that presenter. opportunity would just be so I tell people, to you. Always, always be wherever you are going, be on time. I get shocked that these days, uh, young ladies are supposed to be um, at a place for an interview, for an appointment, and they are late. Yeah. Going to look for a job, and they are late. Yeah. And when they walk in, they're not rushing. You no, know, I know. They're still casually walking casual in. Yeah. yeah. So make sure you are there on time and being early is being on time being on time is being late exactly if you are there if they say 10 30 and you're there exactly tell that you are late right because you need time to calm down right to take in the environment to breathe and compose yourself and then you can move on right secondly make sure that you are prepared so the opportunity success comes when preparation meets opportunity yes i love that quote but as I remember some time ago, I went to the mall without makeup. I always say that whenever I'm off duty two days in a week, one day I rest my face, no makeup. Okay. So I went to the, yeah, it was the mall um, one day, no makeup on. And when you Google my pictures, one of the pictures is that you see it. I met this um, journalist uh -huh. from Switzerland. Uh -huh. She said, oh, she's in Ghana. And when I was coming, people were talking about that I'm a presenter. And she's shocked that I'm a presenter and... I have no makeup right. on so she wants to do a feature on me and she took a picture of me without makeup uh -huh. and did a feature on me in a swiss in a swiss magazine you see so i mean opportunity comes at any anytime. time anytime you just anytime. never know and i'm you not have to saying be that to young lady should not have fun get crazy right do it but whatever environment you're in there Right. Open your eyes to any opportunity and right. make sure that when the opportunity comes, you can take it. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I love this advice. I love, yeah. love, love it. Okay, <laughs> so now still more. Well, I want us to compare news, female news anchors from back then right. and the ones now. Right. Do you feel like they work as hard? Do you feel like they're as passionate? Because I feel sometimes it's all about lights, camera, action. I'm famous. I'm on TV. Yeah. How do you feel? Yes, I mean, some of them are passionate, some of them are hardworking. Right. But some of them, too, it's all about coming on TV. Mm -hmm. They think all it takes is to come on TV. No. Right. No. 
Because this in my time, we were told that you need to be involved in the script writing. The reason why you need to go out and be a reporter and be actively involved in the news production is that sometimes you'll be asked to do live interviews. Right. And if you're not ready, if you're not trained, if you're not prepared for it, you'll be caught very, you know, yeah, wanting. off guard and like off guard and you can't do it. Right. And you'll be exposed and you'll be embarrassed. Yes. So speaking of standpoint, it's about women. Yes. You're highlighting issues that go on with women. Yes. I want to ask why why did you take on the women issues you could have done maybe entertainment right there's so many why right. women you know a lot of my friends are also very much surprised right because when i was at infant mind girls in fact right from primary school so i've always been about entertainment i was part of the cultural group in fact my girls i was modeling i was dancing for school i became the entertainment prefect so everybody expected me to be Right. Uh, some, if even if I was going to do a program, it should be about entertainment. Right. And though my father's been dead ten years, mm -hmm. I'm still a daddy's girl. Right. I can't make a sentence without mentioning my father's name. Right. I grew up with my father. It's my father who took care of me. So you would think that if anything, I'll be fighting for men and not because my yeah. father was super. Right. But my father raised me to believe in myself as a woman. He raised me with a, and instilled in me that. There's nothing I can achieve as a woman if I put my hand, my, 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 my mind to it. I'm no different from a man. A man is no different from me. Whatever it is, yet biologically we are different. But in everything, if I put my mind to it, I can achieve it. Right. I lived a sheltered life okay. by my father. I lived with my father even in secondary school. When a boy writes to me, I'll send it to my father until <laughs> form three when I became, you know, yeah. I thought I'd come then I stopped. My father suspected that mm, um, I need to be careful about right. my daughter, you know. But I went to GIT. I came into the media scene and suddenly because you're a woman, you're being called names, you're yes. being insulted, you're not expected to do certain things. I just right. didn't get it. Right. I said, no way. We need to change this. Yes. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, when I went to do my master's in England, mm -hmm. in um, London, City University, London, I was taught by a feminist. Okay. She was the first female to um, present the news on BBC International. Okay. Christabel King. She instilled in me that feminist ideas right. and feminist, the need to stand for women, right. the need to, you know, call the bluff right. and always make sure that you set a pace for other young women to know that she did it. Right. I can also do it. Right. It's not a taboo. It's not a crime. It's just being herself, right. being assertive, being confident, being bold. Right. So I came back and I'm like, okay, we need to do something about to change the situation here in Ghana. Right. At the time, we had a lot of shows about women, but it was all about celebrating a, an individual woman's achievement. Right. Okay, but you I, know what? Mm. We have to take another quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get more into why standpoint, why women. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Sincerely V. I am Vanessa Jan, Real Women, Real Voices. I am here with Gifty Auntie, and the conversation is just inspiring, it's motivating. And when we went to break, I asked why standpoint, right. why women issues, and right. you were going into detail. Yes, yeah. Because I, I thought that most of the programs we had mm -hmm. about women were celebrating women, individual women and children, which was very good. Right. I remember I was featured on Obama, on, which was aired on TV Africa. Okay. I was celebrated, I, I was honored and all that. But I thought that we need to have a program that will discuss issues. Okay. No barriers. Okay. No, you know, uh, inhibitions, obstacles. We just say it as it is. Right. Talk about our problems as women for people to know that or for other women to know that they're not the only ones suffering. Yes. But it can be done. 
it can be it wasn't easy but i thank god that because i i was the type of i'm still the type of woman who easily share her story right and talk about my flaws right my challenges so people found it easy coming to me to share that some of the stories or programs we've done that it shocked even me right that people were able to share that intimate part of their lives sometimes on they the need that platform to right. share you know so that was how the standpoint came okay. so we, we have the tagline listen to the feminine side mm. we both have feminine and masculine side okay. for a long time right. we've lived in this a masculine world right the feminine side needs to be also applied right in a can or, or in three they said nami or batampa is a good mother yeah yeah yeah, yeah. is man, mother earth earth right. the world is supposed to be a she right so how come we are always celebrating only the masculine right or talking about the masculine let's talk about the feminine side right. as well I love it because sincerely, V is for women. Yes. So, yeah. I'm even like I keep saying, honored to have you because yeah. you inspire me and you've inspired yeah. me even to do my show and thank to feel it. confident as a woman thank and you. sit and be able. So, thank, thank you, you so said. much. And one thing I like about your show is that you don't just celebrate the woman who comes on, but you also let her allows her to talk about issues. Right you know that's right. one thing i love about your show thank you well thank done you, thank you so we're gonna wrap up part one okay but before we wrap up what advice would you give to young girls who look up to you and say gifty auntie i want to be just like her when i grow up mm -hmm. what's yeah. your advice well what i would like to tell them is that be prepared for life okay it hasn't been an easy life for me it took me how many years 14 years of being on TV before I was really recognized. Wow, 14 years. 14 years. For 14 years, I was doing the breakfast show every morning. And it's a one controversy, scandal, rumor after, mm -hmm. the, right. after the other. And so when I moved on, mm -hmm. or I actually added a standpoint to it, right. that's rebranding myself. I'm not saying that it will take anybody 14 years. Right. It took you how many years and you're making the impact. Right. We all have different destinies. But just make sure you believe in whatever you're doing. Yes. Don't sit and say you want to be like Gifty Auntie because you see Gifty Auntie winning awards. Exactly. Gifty Auntie being interviewed. Gifty Auntie coming on TV. Gifty Auntie wearing beads. No. Right. Be Gifty Auntie because you really believe in the course right. that she's you know follow the, the the path that she's chatting right anywhere you find yourself you can excel as a woman i agree my father used to say that mm -hmm. wherever you stand you see a star the sky is huge enough for all of us to shine right some the star the, the shine is so bright right. some is not that bright right. but they are all stars we all mean different to different people you have a lot of people looking after me, celebrating me, and you have a lot of people too who just don't want to hear my name. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't right. want to see me. Right. So we all have our fans. Yeah. We all have, you have somebody just watching just because they want to see that chair that you are sitting on. Right. You know, I need that chair. That's all. Right. But we all do have our following. We all do have our calling. Right. Find your purpose. Right. Live your purpose. Right. And you find joy and great happiness and fulfillment right. in doing that. Gifty Auntie has achieved so much professionally, but in the past few weeks, she's been making headlines for another reason. And I know you saw that she is glowing, but you have to stay tuned for part two. Next Sunday, same time, 4.30 p.m., right here on eGhana. Sincerely, V, real women, real voices.